This is it, the final Pog Champs match, the championship finals, Rain Wilson versus Sardosh. Either of these competitors could win this match. Sardosh is the rating favorite. He's been studying a ton, over 200 hours of study in the past two months. Just a crazy amount, but uh, Rain could definitely take this too. Let's just see how the players did. Rain has the white pieces in the first game, and we have e4, c5 from Sardosh, and knight to f3 from Rain. The open Sicilian. Uh, we have or the start of the, the open Sicilian. We have a French Sicilian from Sardosh and B3 from Rain. Rain going for his B3 setup uh, that we've seen him go for. We have Knight to C6 from Sardosh and Bishop B2 from Rain. D5 now from Sardosh and E5 from Rain. Um, I think taking here would have been better. E takes D5, but E5 is an okay move as well. We have queen to c7 from Sardosh and bishop b5 from Rain. Bishop d7 continuing development from Sardosh and Rain makes this exchange. Bishop takes c6, bishop takes c6, and we have c3 from Rain. And I think d4 would have been better striking in the center and um, you, you want to be able to play knight c3 without worrying about d4. So uh, I think d4 would have been better, but we have this c3 move and uh, maybe d4 will come next. We have knight e7 from Sardosh and d4 from Rain, so this does come, and c takes d4, c takes d4 from Sardosh, but now uh, now you can play this knight c3, but your bishop is sort of blocked in by your pawns. So uh, I think Sardosh is definitely off to a great start. Rain also off to a very good start, just uh, not as good of a start as Sardosh. So I think Sardosh is definitely a tiny bit better here, but um, it, it's nothing too major yet. We have knight to f5 from Sardosh and now castles from Rain. Bishop b4 continuing development and a3. I really like this a3 move by Rain. Uh, just kicking this bishop away, which Sardosh moves. Bishop to a5, b4, and now bishop to b6 from Sardosh. We have rook to e1 from Rain and castles by Sardosh. Both players doing very well so far. Just, uh, uh, yeah, Rain's just got to get this knight developed to uh, d2 or c3 and he should be good to go uh, once again however this bishop is not doing too well uh, with these pawns all on the dark squares it's kind of not really doing anything right now just getting in the way but you know maybe that bishop can be happier later in the game we have knight bd2 from rain completing development now and a5 from sardosh we have knight b3 now from rain maybe he will put this knight on the c5 square uh, and now a takes b4 a takes b4 from both players. Bishop a4 now from Sardosh, pinning this knight to the queen. So Rain should definitely get that unpinned with queen to d3. And he does. He plays queen to d3. Really great chess from both sides so far. We have queen c4 from Sardosh. And this basically forces the queen trade um, because otherwise you will lose the knight. So uh, here, queen takes c4, I think would have been better. But Rain plays another move which is knight c5 and um, th this also uh, is an okay move we have queen takes d3 now and knight takes d3 uh, and here sardosh goes for g5 and his idea is he's got these two attackers on this d-pawn and white has two defenders so he's trying to remove this knight uh, as one of the defenders however this runs into a problem which is g4 and this stops black from playing g4 and also attacks the knight and now once the knight moves away now your g5 pawn just hangs as black. So we have knight to e7 and knight takes g5. And now rain is up a pawn. So uh, this bishop still not doing too well, but rain is up a pawn. So overall, probably fairly even, but uh, maybe white is doing a tiny bit better here. We have knight c6 from Sardosh and knight to c5 from rain. Bishop takes c5 and b takes c5 from rain now knight b4 from sardosh and rook to e2 so with this knight before sardosh was thre threatening rook to c2 and also potentially uh knight to d3 picking up the bishop although you probably wouldn't want to trade this knight uh, for this bishop um but you know just th this knight c2 move is definitely a threat so you definitely got to stop that as rain which rain does with rook to e2 we have knight c2 anyway but this allows a tactic from Rain, which is Rook takes a4, and after Rook takes a4, Rook takes c2. So Rain could get two minor pieces for the Rook here, which is generally favorable for the side who is getting the two minor pieces. 
Um, so will he go for this? Yes, he does. He plays rook takes a4. And after rook takes a4, rook takes c2. Sardosh was a little bit disappointed here. But he's still in the game. You know, Rain will have to coordinate these minor pieces. And especially after this next move from Sardosh, rook to a2. Now pinning the bishop to the rook. So this is really... You got to do something about this really quickly because if black gets uh, if black gets another attacker on this bishop here, you could lose that bishop and be losing as white. Uh, so you got to unpin this rook uh, as soon as possible, basically. And rain realizes this. You can do it with the knight or the king, but I think the king is better. And rain agrees. He brings the king to f1, and he's going to bring his king over to get that bishop unpinned. We have rook f to a8. Sardosh trying to attack that bishop again, but. He's not going to get there in time. King e2, rook 8 to a4, king d3, and rook b4. Um, the king is just in time to unpin the bishop. And here, this rook b4 move by, by Sardosh is not actually the best move because now white can play bishop c3, attacking both rooks. So one of them will definitely be traded off, and uh, you'll go into a losing endgame as black. You want to keep as many pieces on the board as you can as black. So... This does happen in the game. Rain goes for bishop c3, and we trade a pair of rooks. Rook takes c2, and king takes c2. And here you got to play rook a4 as Sardosh. Uh, you cannot play the move that he played in the game, which is rook to c4. Now this allows white to play king b3, trapping the rook. You can't take the rook right now because it's guarded by the pawn, but this knight will come to d2 and pick up the rook very soon. If you, uh, if you try something like b5, there's simply knight f3. b4 hitting the bishop now. Um, and not taking this bishop or not taking this pawn that would allow the rook to escape to c1, but uh, that would still be winning for white. But the cleanest win here is simply bishop b2, keeping the rook trapped, and knight will come to d2 next move. Uh, you'll be up a full piece and you'll have this passed pawn. Um, so it will be very winning for white. So Rain definitely could have won here after Sardosh played rook to c4, but instead we have the immediate knight to f3, and now you got to get your rook out of there. Now you got to play rook to a4. Sardosh doesn't see this though. He plays king g7, giving Rain another chance at king b3, but he doesn't go for it. He instead just plays knight d2, forcing Sardosh's rook out of there. So after rook to a4, now this tactic is no longer available. Uh, and here is white. Your plan is going to be, you basically want to bring your king in and uh, basically win this b pawn with your king. Um, you could do it with your minor pieces, but the king is probably the most efficient and easiest to try to win this b pawn uh, right now. And then you just want to promote this c pawn. So uh, that's the easiest plan. We could see something like king b3, rook a8, uh, and king b4, and you're just going to come in here with your king. And um, if the rook tries to guard the pawn from b8, then king c7 or king a7, and um, you're going to be fine. So uh, this would have been a very easy win from Rain. However, instead of this king b3 plan from Rain, we have f4. Rain playing on the wrong side of the board. You've got to try to win this pawn. That's, that's, uh, that would have been the best plan for Rain, in my opinion. Uh, so it's still winning. We'll just see how Rain goes about this. We have king g6 and h4 now from Rain. And this allows Sardosh to play h5 and uh, now trade this pawn and activate his king and it gets a lot trickier for white so we do have h5 on board definitely the right call from sardosh sardosh making that correct plan and here you got to take i mean you got to take this uh pawn or at least you know play g5 or f5 or something um you cannot play the move that sardosh played which is knight b1 and th this doesn't even attack the rook so here sardosh should definitely take this g4 pawn and uh you, you'll even win the h pawn you'll have this pass g pawn and now it's black who is winning this so um yeah sardosh definitely could have gone for this but instead after knight b1 we have rook to a2 check and now this allows white to get back into the game because after king b3 now the rook is attacked so um you, uh, after you move the rook you won't have this uh h takes g4 anymore and you cannot hang your rook that that's just not uh not possible. So uh, Rain could have saved this position with king b3, but instead he goes king d3. And now as Sardosh, you have another chance to take this g4 pawn. Not exactly sure what the players were thinking here. This is sort of a double blind spot where I guess both of them missed this g pawn was hanging. 
uh, a little crazy, but you know, this is still PogChamps. So, uh, uh, you know, who knows what, what, what they were thinking. Uh, and let's just see how the game went. We have Rook to H2, definitely not as good as this H takes G4 move. And now Rain takes, G takes H5 check. So Rain is still winning this, but uh, it's gonna be tricky. So we'll, we'll just have to see how the game finishes out. We have King takes H5 and now Bishop E1 defending the H pawn, Rook to H1, now skewering the pieces, but White can defend with King to D2. We have King G4 now going after this F pawn and knight to c3 from rain. Rain has no really good way of defending this f pawn. King takes h or f4 and now knight e2 check. King to g4 and knight g3 and this interferes with the bishop's defense of the h pawn. So black should definitely take this with their rook as also the rook was attacked. So you don't want to take this with your king. Uh, and this would actually be a draw with perfect play. And um, maybe a easy draw as you know all of the pawns are sort of in the uh, in the same area, so I think this would likely be a solid draw for most players, um, especially at this level, this championship finals level of players um, that Sardosh and Rain um, at their skill level. But after Knight G3, we don't see Rook takes H4. In fact, we don't even see Rook H2 getting out of this attack. We see instead King takes H4, hanging the Rook. Sardosh hangs his Rook which is crazy, you know, you'd think, you'd think championship finals level, we would be past hanging pieces, but this is pog champs, we're never past hanging pieces. Uh, so we have knight takes h1, time pressure could have been a thing, you know, players getting a little low on time, Sardosh only with a little over a minute left, Rain with about three minutes left. So now this is totally winning for Rain, he's up two pieces. Sardosh, the plan for you to try to draw this is you got to trade all the pawns and then uh, Rain almost certainly doesn't know how to do the bishop and knight checkmate. That's like a 2,000 rated level checkmate. Uh, so most players under 2,000 probably aren't going to know that checkmate. Um, and if white has no more pawns to promote, then you will get a draw here as Sardosh from the 50 move rule or, uh, you know, insufficient material or whatever. Um, so yeah, that's that's your plan as Sardosh. That's what your plan is supposed to be, or that, that's the best plan for Sardosh to try to draw this. So let's see if Sardosh goes for that. Uh, we have King G4 now and Knight to G3 from Rain, King to F4 and King D3, King G5 and Knight to E2, F5 now and E takes F6. Uh, so Rain trades one pawn. We have King takes F6 now and Knight to C3, King to E7 and Bishop G3. Um, here D or E5, uh, would have been a try, but then this knight takes d5, and um, uh, I mean, th this could have been a try, actually. Um, you, you just want to try to trade as many pawns as possible. Obviously, with perfect play from white, it's still totally winning for white, and white could probably hold on to at least one pawn in all variations if they play correctly, but um, this could have been a try from Sardosh. But instead, we have king to e7 and bishop g3 now, king d7 and king to e3, Rain gonna bring his king in over here. We have king c6 and bishop d6, king to d7. Uh, once again, b6 could have been a try here uh, just to try to trade one pair of pawns, knight a4 and b takes c5. And here, if white takes with the pawn, then now they have this passed pawn and um, uh, it's gonna be very winning for white. But if white takes with the bishop or even the knight and hanging the bishop, then uh, we could still have uh, Black could still have drawing chances uh, if they can trade off the last pawn. So uh, this could have been another try from Sardosh. We have king d7 instead though. And now after knight to a4, king c6, knight b6, king b5, knight c8, king c6, and king to f4. Rain now bringing his king in to gobble up that e-pawn. We have king d7 hitting the knight. So knight b6 check, king back to c6, king to e5, and king b5. The e pawn will be lost here. Uh, we have king takes e6 and king to c6, bishop e5, and now black must abandon the d pawn. So after king b5 and king takes d5, now white will promote the d pawn. And um, as long as white doesn't stalemate here, as long as rain doesn't stalemate, rain will get this win. We have king to a6, king d6, and now king a7, king to c7, and king to a6. There's no stalemate yet. 
we have d5 and king to b5 d6 king takes c5 but it doesn't matter because this d pawn is promoting we have d7 and king to b5 sardos trying to tuck his king in and uh limit his number of squares available to his king so maybe there will be a stalemate d8 equals queen now and king to a6 queen d5 but there's no stalemate as the king has the a7 square and now there's a couple checkmates here. There's queen takes b7, queen to a5, or queen to b2. And I think that's it for the checkmates. But reign goes for queen a5, and this is checkmate. So reign takes the first game. Sardosh is going to have to bring it back in the second game. Reign did get that upset. He was the rating underdog by a little bit. But yeah, a um, couple blunders from both players in this game. But overall, they played really well, and um, end games are just tricky. I, a, a few of the blunders, I think probably the majority of the blunders in this game uh, were in the end game, and those end games are just really tricky and uh, require a lot of calculation skill, which a lot of beginners, their calculation skill is um, somewhat limited. So, uh, yeah, very good chess overall, especially for these guys' skill level. But uh, we'll just have to see if Sardosh can take us to a tiebreaker in game two. I don't think I have anything else to say about this game or this match. So check out my PogChamps 3 playlist up there and check out game two of the finals, the championship finals on the left side of the screen. Stay awesome, stay subscribed, like and subscribe. I love you guys. I'll see you next time.